this is uh, the Smart Gallery at Lightning in a Bottle 2012. My name is Doug Campbell. I'm the co-founder of an event series called Mindshare LA and also a creative collective called Synlabs. The idea behind SMART is actually an acronym. It's a little bit tongue-in-cheek, the name, but also it's really a dynamic combination of where science meets art is where amazing things happen. The idea of SMART's been around forever, and we're just calling it SMART to give it a name so people can rally around it. We're saying here that with every new technique, with every new technology, comes a new opportunity for expression. A typical art movement might have a style or a medium the idea of smart is the cutting edge at all times forever, right? So within five or 10 years, it's gonna look different. It's always gonna be, what are the newest tools that I have access to with which I can express myself, with which I can tell a story? I met Doug and I saw what he was doing with Mindshare and I said, let's go ahead and take what you do with Mindshare and sort of apply it to this mobile gallery I've been running for the last six years. And we took his sort of outline criteria of having workshops and speakers and we've actually took the artists and let them do the workshops and talks so people could actually see how the art was made, learn about the techniques and processes, and hear them speak about their work as well. Uh, there were a lot of artists who we've shown in the past who wanted to be a part of this show, but they didn't really incorporate any technology or new media into their stuff. And so I invited some of these artists to come over to the shop and we take a photograph of their work, and next thing you know, we're laser etching prints onto walnut, we're CNC milling their designs from Illustrator into uh, pieces of wood and inlaying it with plastic, and right before their eyes, they watched us in a matter of an hour take their work that was done sort of an old traditional manner and suddenly revamp it using new technology. What it's doing is it's democratizing art in a lot of ways. A lot of art is relegated to the elite. To understand this one stroke of color on another stroke, you have to really understand where it came from, and it's, it's a high art understanding. I think what's really more interesting is appealing to the vast populace by giving them artwork, giving them experiences that helps them consider the relationship with themselves, others around them, and the planet at large. Science is also going through a similar situation. With the democratization of science, what you get is the access in a way that you can understand. So now, when we have talks on physics that I can understand, I become able to act on that insight and that knowledge. So that's what I mean by the democratization of science, is that the access to that knowledge is now there more than ever and more clear and understandable. And so the more skill sets that can interact and choose each other's languages and start to interface and give each other ideas, the better for everybody. What do we really want people to walk away with? I think there's two elements to explore. One is the inspiration. When I can actually see visuals of what the carbon emissions are from the air traffic over any one particular day, that's something that's lost in data typically. But when I can see a visualization of it, I can learn about my world. When I can see my data and my stress levels beautifully illustrated in a chart that I can understand, I start to understand more deeply about myself. When I can communicate through a portal, with someone in a gallery on the other side of the world, I'm learning about my planet. And so that's what I'm hoping people come away with is both inspiration and knowledge to actually act on that inspiration. We're like, hey, step in, multi-touch this screen, start playing around, start having fun, start learning about your world, and maybe now actually go and do some of your own, you know?